Monday. It's May 20th. And the word of the day is monstrocracy, which means a system of government that gives power to monsters. Used in a sentence, I just made up the word monstrocracy, but spellcheck isn't underlining it because it can tell the world has needed that word for a while now. Okay, so is that where you elect a monster and then they appoint a cabinet of curiosities? Yeah, <laughs> it's, yeah it's that or the one of Dr. Caligari. So yeah, yeah. right, exactly. <laughs> I'm no illusion. I'm Michael Marshall. I'm Eli Bosnick, and broadcasting delayed from America's far center, we are the Skeptocrats. On this week's episode, the Tories will lose more seats than a Boeing jetliner. Justice Alito plans for his new job as Inquisitor Supreme a little too early. And we'll debate the debate about the pre-debate debates. But first, the rest of the intro music. Joining me for headlines tonight are my fellow skeptic rats Eli Bosnick and Michael Marshall. Gentlemen, the NFL schedule was released last week and the Jaguars are going to be playing in London on October 20th. The very same weekend as the world's best skeptical conference, QED, and Manchester, England tickets available now at QEDCon.org. So, my question to you is, do you think Trevor Lawrence would come on Saturday if I invited him? I mean, he plays for the Jaguars, Noah. I think if you agree to pay his bus fare, he'll let you fuck him. Oh. Uh, yeah, it depends. I mean, has he got £184 for a ticket? Or £164 if he takes advantage of our special early bird ticket offer until September? <laughs> <laughs> well, he makes $9 million a year and he eats at the Waffle House, so I feel like he does. <laughs> Still. Yeah. In our lead story tonight, Donald Trump accidentally believed his own bullshit again, which allowed Joe Biden to goad him into not one but two presidential debates this year. Because the man who literally can't achieve the minimal goal of remaining conscious through a day in court honestly believes all the senile Sleepy Joe bullshit that he's been projecting for the last four years. Yeah, Sleepy Joe said I wouldn't do this debate in a briar patch. So now, <laughs> ow, ow, <laughs> ow. Oh, it is not great that half your country wants to give the nuclear cords back to the guy who gets tricked by Double Dog Day. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like 51, 52% by the latest polls. No, of course... There have always been presidential debates as long as any of us have been alive. So this shouldn't be a surprise at all, but there actually was a question about whether they'd occur at all this year. See, since 1987, presidential debates have been controlled by the Commission on Presidential Debates, but both candidates this year have expressed frustration with that commission. Trump's campaign for its refusal to schedule debates earlier in the election cycle, and Biden's for its complete and utter refusal to enforce any rules whatsoever in the previous debates. They, they allowed them to devolve into the kind of thing you'd expect a fucking lunch lady to break up. So despite the commission scheduling debates on September 16th, October 1st, and October 9th, there was a real question about whether either candidate would agree to appear. So I, I really hope the commission still keep those dates, even if it means they've got to empty chair both candidates. Because <laughs> honestly, that will be way more respectful to the concept of democracy than the last debates were. Yeah, right? and, and I love how the media keeps talking about how both sides are to blame here, right? Because, you know, Trump refused to be fact-checked, he refused to let his opponent talk, and he still refuses to admit that he tried to overthrow the government, and Joe Biden insists on having a presidential debate. So, you right. know, it's, it's <laughs> but fair, a lot of fair. blame to, to spread around here. Um, well, so, okay, we got our answer on this, though, last week when Biden released a video challenge on social media, and in a brilliant reference to the fact that Trump has of late been required to spend four days a week in court, it included the line, quote, let's pick a date, Donald. I hear you're free on Wednesdays, end quote. Um, <laughs> this ultimately led the two to settle on a pair of debates, one on CNN on June 27th and another on ABC on September 10th. The June debate will be by far the earliest a presidential debate has ever been held. Sorry, just uh, penciling that into the skeptocrat calendar mm -hmm. here. Important for content. But maybe they've scheduled this debate this early because given how badly the trial's going for Trump, his availability come October might depend heavily on the strength of prison <laughs> Wi-Fi. <laughs> right, yeah, exactly. Now, the details around the debate remain to be seen, but it's very possible that the whole thing will still fall apart during the negotiations. Biden's camp is pushing for a debate with no audience in which the candidates' microphones will automatically cut off when their time is up. And given the childish bullshit Trump pulled in the previous debate, those both seem like reasonable requests. Uh, Trump, on the other hand, said he wants the debate to be in a very large venue and accused Biden of being, quote, afraid of crowds, end quote. <laughs> the applause meter and the sledgematic stay or I walk. Right. <laughs> yep. But Trump said he wants the large venue for, quote, excitement reasons. Like, yes. the stakes of getting to run America aren't high enough to keep his interest without a crowd <laughs> there for him to play to. But the thing is... 
that's probably true. Like, given that the stakes of keep your corrupt ass out of prison weren't high enough to keep him from dozing off in the courtroom. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Now, of course, Biden has taken a great deal of shit for circumventing the commission on presidential debates on this one. And given the image of a staunch institutionalist that he likes to portray, it is a bit surprising. But I would argue that it's entirely justifiable based on the extent to which they lost control in the last election. Uh, The commission made zero effort to enforce the rules, including rules like Trump's disease ridden family has to keep their fucking covid masks on. Right. And fucking Trump can't show up all covid which he did. But also Trump just talked over Biden the whole fucking time and nobody did anything at all about it. So going another way is completely understandable. OK, but to be fair to the debate commission, whoever kept doing that side camera shot of Donald Trump to show what he looks like from that angle <laughs> might as well have been a Democratic opera. Yeah, right? yeah like- errors both ways. Yeah. Now, of course, there are other advantages to Biden bypassing the commission that deserve mention. One, of course, is that he whittled the schedule down from uh, three debates to two. Another is that they brought the date of the first one forward by months, which matters a lot given how early voting starts. Yeah, and how rapidly both candidates are deteriorating cognitively. Yeah, okay. Yeah, obviously, (laughs) yeah. Now, but another huge one, though, is that it allows them to exclude Robert F. Kennedy Jr. and his brain worm. Oh, <laughs> right. Yeah. And th- maybe that's what the- they can do with the other debates, right? They just have Robert Kennedy and his brain worm just debate each other. But, but anyway, <laughs> I, so- uh, I am not delicious. No, nope, I'm not. <laughs> I'd watch oh, it. So- but depending on uh, polling, uh, RFK Jr. might have qualified to make the stage under the commission's rules. Uh, Kennedy is livid over that, of course, posting on social media, quote, keeping viable candidates off the debate stage undermines democracy, end quote. And that's true. A uh, solid argument, though, could also be made that putting non-viable candidates on the stage does the same. Yeah. yeah I've, also, I feel like he should have to tell us whether he issued that statement or the worm, right? Like, right? at this point... Yeah, Yeah. either that or at the very least prove that the brain worm is eligible to run. Like, when are we going to get to see the brain worm's birth certificate? (laughs) Thank you. Yeah, no, it was born out of the country, yeah. Um, And look, I'll be honest with you, 10 or 12 years ago, I might have said that presidential debates had outlived their usefulness, but in the current climate where we've got two candidates who refuse to do press conferences or hardball interviews, I'm actually glad that we've got a tradition here that draws them out and forces the issue. It just... Fucking sucks that I'll probably have to watch the damn thing. It's already in the calendar. Yeah, I figured it would be. Yeah. And speaking of all the fucked up shit I'll do for money, we need to take a quick break to tell you about Matreon. Hey, podcast listener. I'm Eli Posnick. I'm Michael Marshall. And I'm No Illusions, here to remind you that it's Matreon, that time of year when we ask you to support our shows on Patreon.com. Your support on Patreon is what allows Marsh to regularly do our shows without also having to do whatever it is he did. We, we, we weren't paying attention. Oh, so I worked for... Uh... That's over, Marsh. Mm. Now you're here, and that's all that matters. But you won't just be preventing Marsh's starvation. Marsh and Nicola will also be joining us at this year's Pajama Party live stream, which means you can make him defend the indefensible, ask him your questions, and so much more. Wait, like the bit on from Incredulous? and he's not using his bits but that's not all if we hit enough new and upgrading patrons marsh will have seen your pets the armenian genocide denying cat on be reasonable nope i i will not do that make marsh debate eli pretending to be an ahistorical cat on any of our patreons and now back to the show it's not going to happen just saying there's a number there's not a number i've said no or is there there is not And we're back. Next up in headlines in Alito Too Late News. (laughs) Supreme Court Justice Samuel Alito is many things. A theocrat, an unrepentant bigot, proof that I'm a coward who doesn't really want to do something to make the country better. But (laughs) he's definitely not qualified to be a Supreme Court Justice. And we got yet more evidence of that this week, as it was reported that just weeks after the January 6th attempted coup of the U.S. government, he was flying his flag upside down in support of it. His flag. Like, honestly, one of the most baffling things about your country is just how many people feel the need to have their own personal copy of America's logo, like, proudly displayed outside their house, (laughs) just in case they, like, wake up one day and forget which country they're in. Right. 
Yeah, yeah. No, true story. The first time I was in England, I noticed the same number of American and British flags while I was there. Was three of each. <laughs> I'm sorry, Marsh, your fucking king just unveiled his Vigo the Carpathian portrait. There is nothing <laughs> about America. Yeah, but I don't have it hung in my living room, Eli. Right, you can yes, have one exactly. of them. You know there's a Brexiter who has that a mini of that in his living room right now. <laughs> a lot, Red, means he's bold, he does. Means he's bold. <laughs> Lost my job again. So, yeah, look, if you weren't aware of this, uh, the right have all sorts of fun little codes for I'm an idiot, right? Remember the okay symbol or, you know, it's okay to be white. And in the case of conspiracists about the 2020 election, a.k.a. stop the steal, flying the flag upside down is their sign like I'm in support of that, which is exactly what Alito did. On January 17th of 2021, yep. right? 11 days after his side tried to overthrow the government, he is one of the highest appointed members of. So the thing is, this is why you guys need a flag that's more like ours. Like the UK flag has rotational symmetry, but not mirror symmetry, oh, which means it yeah. can be flown upside down. But the only way you can tell is that one of the stripes would be like two inches higher than it should have been. That's it. It just means that our conspiracy does have to like really, really work for their symbology. They've got exactly. to have like a really yes. close eye for it. Uh, so as the New York Times points out, Alito's feelings about the election are no secret, right? While his flag was upside down, Alito was arguing for the Supreme court to hear donald trump's insane yep. challenges to the election but it was an argument he lost to nobler more reasonable minds like brett kavanaugh yeah yeah no it was really telling in the wake of that coup attempt how many republicans were turning to each other going like couldn't you fucking see us winking guys ah, guys <laughs> it's for the show so what does sammy boy have to say don't worry, it was just his wife's attempt to piss off the neighbors. He told the New York Times, quote, I had no involvement whatsoever in the flying of that flag. It was briefly placed by Mrs. Alito in response to a neighbor's use of objectionable and personally insulted language on yard signs, oh. end quote. <laughs> yeah, but to be fair, that yard sign did read... Justice Alito lives next door, and you'd be doing our democracy a great service if you... And then they ran out of space in the yard sign, so I, I have mm. no idea how they finished that sentence. Mm. It was a fucking 440 hertz beep, Marsh. That I had. <laughs> it's true, yeah. Now, you might be wondering, hey, Eli, isn't a Supreme Court justice showing obvious bias like that disqualifying and illegal and and the answer is yes of course yes right judicial experts across the country have weighed in with a variety of fucking duh concurrences but <laughs> this is the supreme court that both leaked the dobbs decision and contains amy coney barrett so who the fuck cares about any decorum anymore am i right yeah, it, it's also, it's interesting that we now have two Supreme Court justices whose best defense is, no, my wife is a wanton insurrectionist trying to overthrow the elected government, though, right? Like, two out of fucking nine now. Jeez, that's rough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so either way, quick reminder, this guy who had a fucking Make America Great Again flag to piss off his neighbor, like he's Chevy Chase in a National Lampoon movie, or... <laughs> just real life Chevy Chase and he <laughs> is going to rule on not one but two Supreme Court cases about that election this month yeah. one about whether overthrowing the government is stopping the activity of that government <laughs> and another about whether telling people to overthrow the government is trying to overthrow the government in the meantime I'm not saying you should wish harm on my wife and child I'm saying if you ever hear that happened buckle in for some good news right afterwards you know what i'm saying just depending on traffic you're getting good news oh, right away <laughs> okay but can you just at least wait until after matreon because i've already had one visit to america that was extended unexpectedly and i, I don't want my next one to be extended indefinitely so <laughs> give it, give it a, a time i'd like to hear nicholas vote before i promise that <laughs> And next up in electoral failure news, nice. we recently had an election here in the UK. And I know it seems like we do that a lot, but sadly, this wasn't the general election that we've been crying out for for so long now. Instead, this was the local elections to choose local councillors across the country. So it's a lot less direction of the nation and a lot more when will the bins get emptied, basically. <laughs> um, but that said, it does help to get like a sense of how the country's feeling, and according to these results, things are looking decidedly bleak for the Tory party. 
Well, sure. Whenever people decide to take out the trash, it's bad for the Tory party. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> well done, sir. So they lost the London mayoral election to a third Sadiq Khan term, despite an ingenious electoral strategy of telling Londoners that the, that their city is a dangerous hellhole. That was their, their plan to win, mm. right down to releasing a now-deleted scaremongering video that painted London as, quote, the crime capital of the world uh, over some very scary black-and-white footage which turned out to be footage of New York. <laughs> <laughs> which, to be clear, has a significantly lower crime rate than London. <laughs> right. Do you guys want the American National Guard to come hang out in the underground? They, they belong there as much as they did in New York City. So yeah, we can lend them right? To you if you want. Yeah, have you guys have you tried harassing the brown people? <laughs> yes. Yes, we had a whole elections about that, yeah. Oh, okay, all right. And the voiceover also described how Londoners were, quote, under siege with criminals ruling the streets... Ever since, and again, this one is a direct quote, ever since Mayor Khan seized power. What? And by seized power, they mean handily beat conservative opponents in two and now three successive elections. <laughs> well, you know, they're calling it the night of the long ballot. Right, yeah, yeah right. exactly. <laughs> So this vid this video made London, or I guess New York, look like Gotham City, and then tried to argue that the only person who could save those poor citizens was a xenophobic and Islamophobic conspiracy theorist called Susan Hall. And it did not go well, because it turns out, let me be the ruler of your dog shit city is not a winning electoral pitch, apparently. No, didn't, didn't Are, win well, people over? Well, good, because nobody told the Trump team that is their national pitch. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> and in fact, this entire local election across the country has been a disaster for the Tories. They won just 515 seats across the entire country, which is half as many as they got in the previous local election. And that's even despite their very best efforts at voter suppression. Because voters now have to show a photo ID when they come to vote, which you never used to have to do before. And that's thanks to a 2022 law that was introduced in order to tackle the rampant epidemic of voter fraud, by which I mean 15 cases since 2019. Mm -hmm. um, in that time, we've almost had more prime ministers than credible cases of voter fraud in this country. <laughs> I know. <laughs> also, I, no offense, Marsh, but voter ID laws feel a little quaint in a country with three last names and five first names. <laughs> <No. laughs> really? Michael well, Kensington guess, needs to show ID? Uh, oh. no, no. no, I guess that does answer my question about harassing the brown people, though. So okay, <laughs> yep, I asked yep. and answered. Well, exactly, because obviously people without things like passports and driver's licenses just happen to be in the demographic less likely to vote Tory. But the way that this voter ID scheme was introduced is so much more obviously corrupt than that. Because the list of acceptable forms of ID include an older person's travel pass, but explicitly not a young person's travel pass. What? Specifically, only one of those travel passes counts. And you know why is there a difference? Well, according to Dehenna Davidson MP, it's because sometimes student travel cards are digital rather than hard copy, and they didn't want to confuse students who only had hard, because only the hard copies were going to count as ID. Um, plus, they also didn't want to confuse young people into thinking they get to do a democracy, apparently. Right, right yeah. obviously, uh -huh. yeah. Another acceptable form of ID? A receipt from an early bird breakfast and a handful <laughs> of Werther's. <laughs> right. <laughs> Still, the government have argued that this photo ID requirement isn't unfair, actually, because, you know, they spend a lot of time and a lot of money making sure that everybody knows they can't vote without ID. But clearly, they haven't done enough, as one voter found out in South Oxfordshire when he was turned away from the polling booth for failing to bring his photo ID. And that voter in question, one Alexander Boris de Feffel Johnson, who what? you might remember was the guy <laughs> in charge of the country when these very important voter ID laws were introduced. <laughs> oh, Jesus That's pretty great. Christ. Pretty great. Yeah, apparently his <laughs> counter argument of, trust me, it was for the schmur schmurs didn't win the day. <laughs> nope, yeah. yeah. So, you know, well done to Boris Johnson for doing the seemingly impossible here, and that's getting me fully on board with this voter ID law. Because <laughs> <laughs> any policy that keeps Boris Johnson as far away as possible from an election can only be a good thing. Right. And in hacking off news, I fell asleep on Friday night wondering what I would do my second Skeptocrat story about. And I woke up Saturday morning to Nick Fuentes accidentally streaming gay porn because he thought he'd logged off his live stream. <laughs> um, all, all I'm saying is that the strongest evidence that there isn't a God might just be how nice he is to me. There's no way he would make it this easy on me if he existed. <laughs> 
But yes, ardent Nazi, Holocaust denier, and only man to ever sit down with Donald Trump and Kanye West and be the worst person at the table, Nick Fuentes either accidentally streamed the gay porn he was watching or, and here at the Skeptic Route, we pride ourselves on providing both sides of the story, he was hacked by the IDF in an effort to make the worst-looking person on Earth look bad. <laughs> Which is crazy, right? Because being gay is both the coolest and most likable thing about Nick Fuentes. Mm-hmm. Totally. Like, this could be your even Hitler was nice to his dog, Nick, and you're completely blowing it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The dog or the opportunity? <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, so for those of you who aren't familiar with Nick Fuentes and don't listen to all the vulgarity for cherry roasts, I should emphasize here that Nazi Nick once famously accused heterosexuality of being gay. Quote, having sex with women is gay. He's talking to men when he says this. Having sex with women is gay. What's gayer than being like, I need cuddles, I need kisses, I need to spend time with a woman, end quote. And based on the live stream, he's apparently still researching the answer to that question because (laughs) after his live stream on whatever fucking off-brand Nazi platforming backwater streaming site he'd been relegated to ended, his still live screen share can be seen immediately opening a tab with some gay porn awaiting. Folks, I record all audio for a living and even i know you close all the tabs before you start i mean it's an amateur mistake (laughs) yeah you record audio shows where you spend most of your time talking about being a sex weirdo and even you take more care than he did yes thank you yes yes fuentes has responded to the controversy claiming that he's being set up by someone claiming to be the israeli defense force uh, which makes sense. I can't imagine they've got much going on these days. Probably have to justify their salary <laughs> really somehow. Summer, yeah. yeah. Now, according to Nick's social media, after the incident went viral, quote, this is getting desperate. My proprietary live stream site. Oh, that's what he's been relegated to. My proprietary <laughs> live streaming site was hacked after my stream went offline by someone claiming to be IDF unit 8200, adding, quote, the hacker took credit by watermarking the porn and leaving messages on the back end of the site. Easily dis- provable nonsense end quote uh he then proceeded to not easily disprove it though well it was so easy he didn't even bother right it was below him below him i mean he would have proved it he's just he's he's really careful about what he screenshots these days he's really paranoid (laughs) about that for some reason (laughs) and in driving on the green news it's not often that a young indoor lad like myself you're 37 years old wait he's only 37 like myself gets to see (laughs) themselves reflected in professional sports both in lifestyle choice and philosophy which is why i'm pleased to say that number one golfer in america right now and my personal sports hero scotty scheffler was arrested for trying to run over a cop with his car hours before teeing off in the pga championship this week oh please tell me i'm not the only one picturing this happening in a golf cart just like really (laughs) slowly (laughs) now you might be asking yourself why did scotty decide to commit vehicular manslaughter so close to tee off great question well like great podcasters everywhere there was a little bit of traffic on the way into the course And like a gentleman and a scholar, Scheffler decided to drive around it. And when a cop stepped out in front of his car because you're not allowed to drive on the green parts of the road, (laughs) Scotty knocked him down with his car and was promptly arrested. Oh, uh, and he didn't even have your excuse that he was just too distracted playing Candy Crush to notice that the officer was in his way. <laughs> yeah, okay, but like, but how did he think that was going to go? Right? Like, did he actually think the cop was going to get back up and go, well, shit, he got me. <laughs> All right, I'll get out of the way. I didn't realize you meant it. Yeah. So uh, Scheffler faces charges of second degree assault of a police officer, third degree criminal mischief, reckless driving, and disregarding traffic signals from an officer. But don't worry, he's a white golfer, so he was mm-hmm. released and allowed to golf that day. Because Lord knows, some things are more important than being a little heavy on the accelerator. Yeah. No, do yourself a favor. Don't even picture what would have happened if this had been an African-American athlete. Yeah, yeah don't do yeah. that. And finally tonight, in of Vice and Menzies news, uh, over at the Tory party <laughs> HQ, the guy whose job it is to maintain the day since one of our MPs was last blackmailed sign sighs and <laughs> reaches for the eraser <laughs> with the news of yet another Tory MP caught up in a comically stupid scandal. 
So this time around, it's the MP for Filed and man who just rubbed the last of his coke into his gums, Mark Menzies MP. <laughs> yeah, it's like his Wikipedia picture is very clearly of him saying, wait, don't take the picture yet. Yeah, no, it's 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 like he's somehow biting his own smile. It's... <laughs> So according to the Times, at three in the morning, one night last December, Menzies called up his campaign manager to explain he'd been locked in a flat by, quote, some bad people, (laughs) and that he needed to give them £5,000 immediately, quote, as a matter of life and death. What? And yeah, apparently he found himself in this bizarre situation after meeting up with a guy he'd connected with on a dating website. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if I ever call you guys needing five grand because I'm locked in a flat with some bad people I met on the internet, it is safe to assume I'm having an awesome night. I was about <laughs> to say, yeah, they found a really good guy who can get two eight balls for way yeah, cheaper than just one. Yeah. <laughs> and a few hours after this ransom phone call, his campaign manager transferred him the money out of her personal savings, although... By that time, it had risen to £6,500 that was being demanded, which huh. begs the question as to what Menzies was able to do over the course of a couple of hours in the dead of night to raise the bill by an extra 1500 yeah, quid. Right. <laughs> All right, gents, look, if we're going to be stuck here together for the next little while, we might as well have some champagne, yeah? Yeah, am I right? <laughs> And you know, if you're feeling and if you're feeling bad for that campaign manager, don't worry, it's fine because Menzies refunded her in full that ransom money out of campaign donations. Oh, well, yeah. And if you're feeling bad for those campaign donors, don't worry, it's fine because they kind of deserve this shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and also, just as an extraordinary coda to this story, this isn't even the first time Mark Menzies has been involved in some outrageous shenanigans. In 2014, he was sacked from his job as a parliamentary secretary after doing drugs with the Brazilian escort he'd hired for sex. And then in 2017, by which time he'd been ele- elected an MP. So he got elected an MP after that first thing. But by 2017, uh-huh. he got into a brawl with a friend after deliberately getting his friend's dog drunk. Oh, my fucking... Okay, so so sharing your drugs with your Brazilian escort, that's just a polite thing to do. Getting a dog drunk should earn you a trip to fucking Christy Gnome's gravel pit. But let's not act like both of those are bad things. Uh, okay, right? okay, yeah. fair. Yeah. But not only did he not lose his seat as MP in filed as a result of that animal abuse, he went on to win the 2019 election there and increased his majority in the process. Because apparently there's nothing that people have filed like more than a politician willing to intoxicate a terrier, apparently. (laughs) So between the drunk dog and the Brazilian escort and the hookup turned hostage situation, Mark Menzies has clearly lived a life. And that is pretty obvious when you compare his most recent parliamentary Entry photo to his 2017 headshot, which appeared in the newspapers alongside those drunk dog stories. There are just seven years between these two photos, and it looks more like 70. Like this guy puts the age in hostage. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, he he looks like a reverse Dorian Gray in that he's the thing that's aging unnaturally, and it turns out he's also the thing locked in an attic. Yeah, yeah. Okay, no joke, podcast listener. When I Googled to see what he looked like for my opening joke, I saw both pictures and assumed the younger one was like the reporter who had written a story about him. (laughs) Yeah. So this man is aging so fast that Eli can make jokes about it. Thank you. And on that note, we're going to close it out. Thanks to Eli Bosnick. Thanks to Michael Marshall. And thanks to all the listeners who liked us and followed us on all the various internets. Please keep doing that. Please keep listening. And please keep telling your friends. And if you find the naive stupidity of our giving away a free show business model to be oddly charming, you can send us gifts of money at patreon.com slash skeptocrat. It's Matreon. There's never been a better time to do it. Just like all the people that Heath is going to thank by name on the next episode. And whether or not you're feeling financially benevolent like those fine people, if you enjoyed our brand of whimsy and you'd like to hear more dick jokes free of charge, check out our brother and sister shows, The Scathing Atheist Guide, Alpha Movies, D&D Minus, and Citation Data Available in all the podcast places. We just have one last thing. Let's compliment that penis. Special thanks to Ryan Slotnick of Evil Giraffes on Mars. He's the creator of the virtuosic musical stylings you heard today, which were used with permission. You should definitely check him out by using the links we'll provide or by Googling the only band called Evil Giraffes on Mars. Until next time, catchphrase sign off. I love the way that you're stealing the uh, Defend the Indefensible from Andy. I stole it for Incredulous from a different show by the BBC called nice. Def- where, where the round is called Defend the Indefensible. Fantastic. <laughs>
awesome. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2024. All rights reserved.